very hot, huh? Me too. And we wore all these Mount Fuji clothes for Tokyo. Just to give you guys an idea of how hot it is, it's like 90 degrees here and super humid. And the reason you have to wear long sleeves when you go to Mount Fuji is because it gets really cold towards the top, obviously, because the elevation's so high. So they always say to bring your extra clothes, but not to wear them when you're in Tokyo because it's so hot. There's a bit of a delay. Is there? With the GoPro turning on. Yeah. Oh, it looks funny when I do this. Your face looks really funny. <laughs> oh, back. A little Ruthie in the middle of it all. <laughs> I heard it's really hard to get around the expressway bus terminal just because it's confusing for foreigners, but we've just been following a map and we found it so far. We'll see if our bus itself is easy to find, but we I'm not even gonna try so much right now. I'm just gonna get familiar with it because our bus is here for another like two hours. We need to the lobby to see if it's easy to understand what's going on. I just, I like doing this because it's more like, oh, it's just casual. Oh my god, it's, it's really bad. good. It's, yeah, it is, of course it is. Our bus is not even on there yet, but it gives us all the information here. So it has like the bus name in English and in Japanese and like where your gate is and everything. So ours is not even on there yet because ours is at 7.25 and the latest it goes is 7.05. We have about one hour until our bus arrives, so we decided now would be a good time to tell you like what we're actually doing and why we're doing it this way. Uh, we're climbing Mount Fuji. Usually people do it in two days, so they'll climb, they'll start one afternoon and they'll climb from fifth station, which is where most people start. There's a few different places to start depending on which trail you want to do. And they hike up to a seventh station. That's where they take rest and adjust to the elevation gain and then they complete their hike in the morning so that they can see sunrise the next morning. Um, the overnight huts are usually around like 70 to 75 dollars per person to stay in and from what we've heard they're really not comfortable at all. So we decided that's super expensive, we're budget and per night in a hotel here in Tokyo we're spending less than 70 dollars together between the two of us. So we decided it's not going to be worth it for us to do this like overnight two-day thing to try and adjust to the whole thing. So we decided that we're gonna try to do it all in one day. So there's a family mart, a family mart. It's just like 7-Eleven or like any other convenience store. And it's right here in the bus terminal. And we decided to get some face masks, like actually not like face mask, but like an actual mask, yeah. you know, <laughs> to protect like the, the air that's coming into your lungs. Because from everything that we've seen on YouTube and heard online, um, especially when you're going downhill, a lot of people will kick up like dust with their boots and stuff um, when they're hiking down. So it's good to wear a mask so that you don't get all that dust and dirt in your face. We got the best seats here. We got one A and one B. We have so much leg room that we use to fill with our backpacks. <laughs> it's the front of the bus, so it's pretty awesome. But the, the bus is pretty spacious in general. I mean, how do you guys know it? Oh, it looks like they have a USB port here. They do. Oh, so awesome. So we can charge the portable charger. Do you have it now? Right? The bus actually got us here like half an hour early, which is awesome. So that gives us an extra like half hour to be able to adjust, I think, to the altitude. But I'm not really feeling anything right now. I feel yeah. really good. I'm ready to go, honestly. Yeah. It's, it's drizzling a little bit outside. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a store in here, so you could like pick up anything that you need. So if you need a headband, if you need a raincoat, if you need a hat, anything, you can pretty much get it from here. So if you didn't get it in Tokyo, you can pick it up here. They also have lockers that you can leave your stuff. Oh, yeah. There you go. We just started our ascent. We're heading up to the Yoshida Trail from the 5th Station Information Center and Stops, which is where the bus dropped us off. But I think neither of us are feeling too tired right now, right? Yeah, we also didn't bring a headlamp, but the phone lamps work pretty well, so that's good. Yeah. And there's a lot of people in front of us and behind us, so it's giving us a lot of light. Alright, just leaving 6th Station. They have <laughs> bathrooms here. Look at all the moths on the back. Yeah, there's a bunch. It's and where the lights are, though. Yeah, um, so now we're continuing up. Yeah, we just got to 6th Station, we're continuing up. They say it's about one hour until 7th Station, but Whoa, you can the see stars the stars are incredible. so clearly from here. 
<laughs> so immediately after you pass six station the terrain changes we've been we've been uh walking like in between trees the trail has been like super covered in like trees and rocks from here but the terrain completely just changed as soon as we passed six station so hopefully it's not too much more difficult but i know volcanic gravel is a little bit harder to hike around so we'll see how it goes now that we're going uphill it's more like gravel a little bit more slippery but still manageable and tiredness level is still pretty low so we're good all right we just made it to seventh station and i think that's just one big tea kettle <laughs> this is a stretching zone <laughs> i put on the beanie and another layer it's getting a little bit colder I think we have about three to four hours to go, so got this. They have chains here, you can't see them. You could probably hear them. Yeah, they're right there for you to hold on to. It's pretty slippery. I've slipped a couple times, but we're hanging on. It's a bit of a traffic jam. All those lights are hikers coming up. Yeah. Great, we made it to a station. It's first aid station in case you need that while you're here. Um, since passing seven station, it's pretty like good luck with people. I'm pretty sure it'll be roughly the same going all the way up. Some points we'll have some more freedom. Some points we'll just be stuck waiting in line. But I think it's kind of nice. There's so many hikers here. Everyone's really nice, and it just feels cool to be part of something big like this. It's so soothing. Everyone's so quiet. You're just like in your thoughts on the way up. It's like meditation, and I love it. Like, I think this is my station, I think. I want to stretch and then switch out the phone so that we can charge this one. But this feels amazing. Honestly, I think tiredness scale, maybe I'm like a 5 out of 10? What do you think? It's not Completely so agree. Yeah. It's not bad at all. I just started getting winded a little bit, but then you like you stop because there's people like in line to go up, so it's been pacing pretty well. I feel so happy. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know if we're at a 10 or 11 station, but definitely a lot more tiring. We have all uphill that route, so I think the first like real break, we're gonna sit down, have a Snickers bar, and then keep heading on up. <laughs> and this last stretch has been probably the hardest of it all. So, uh, if you forgot to bring anything, they have machines like 10 minutes from the summit, so if you forgot a drink, you good to go. So it's about 2.10 and we've made it to the summit. <laughs> I think it took us like just over four hours, but this last part to get to the summit was probably, I think that was the hardest thing I've physically had to do to my body in life. You know, I didn't have to do it, but I chose to do it. But <laughs> Ruthie was gonna throw up like six times. I, oh my God, you know what's so embarrassing? When we got to where, like, literally, we got here and I sat down and I was like, I was like about to throw up because I'm feeling so nauseous and dizzy. And instead, this huge burp came out. A belch. It wasn't it a burp. It was, <laughs> it was, it was so it was embarrassing. And everyone's really, really quiet here. So, yeah, like, but at least it's like dark, so they couldn't really tell that it was me. And they all looked back. <laughs> <laughs> it's so embarrassing. Yeah. So, it's super cold. And the wind chill up here is like crazy. My fingers are frozen. My feet are frozen. My whole body's frozen. So I can't stress enough that you definitely need to bring warm clothes and warmer clothes than we did. We were gonna bring our sweatshirts to bring like a fourth layer, but we didn't. We wish we did at this point. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that was the most beautiful anything I've ever seen in my whole life. You could see, like, I don't know if the camera captured this because we tried it on our phones and we're hoping that it's on its GoPro. But as, like, right before the sun was rising, you could see, like, a little bright line into the clouds, right? And then it started growing and getting longer and longer and longer. And then finally, 
the sun just like bam started coming out of the clouds. It was so cold. I've never seen a sunrise like that. The best thing is it's not as cold as it was before because my fingers were freezing. So I think we might like walk around. So. Yeah. It's a little warmer now. I think we're gonna walk around to try and like warm ourselves up because we've just been sitting here for three whole uh, hours. hours. <laughs> there are so many people up here right now. Made the climb, they're all really nice people, and it's just like I don't know, it just feels really cool. I feel like I'm in the Olympic Village. Yeah. <laughs> it's so inspiring to see this many hikers. It makes me feel like I'm at home, and it makes me feel like I love people. And <laughs> Beautiful. It looks so cool. Like, look at the sunrise. Everyone's decked out and like hiking really gear. Good. Like, yeah, hiking gear. Like coats and, and pants and boots and hats and stuff and everyone's just happy, tired but happy. Here's the famous shrine up that's on top of Mount Fuji, Fuji-san. This is on the way to the crater. The GoPro got all wet from all this fog. Look, Hammer put on his face mask. Uh, See, I told you it wasn't like lotion face mask, you know? I'm ready to go now. Um, we made it back to the base, and since we pretty much ate nothing except for a Snickers bar on the way up, we are having a feast of all the snacks that we bought yesterday. And that includes my my uh, rice thing. It's like this rice triangle that's like all over Japan and I'm so excited to have it. But now it's all smooshed, but I'm gonna eat now it Now it's anyway. a square. I mean, I'm a huge rice fan. I feel like most people are either pasta or rice. Uh, like noodles or rice. And I'm a rice girl. It's not like this is like amazing, it's something incredible. But it's just like, really good rice and seaweed so it's kind of like sushi but without the fish. It's just like rice and seaweed but it tastes really good to me. We got these red bean pastry things and they're incredible. I want to like it looks make so them good. really cold. Yeah right. And then have them because they kind of remind me of like like when you have sushi and you get these little mochi balls at the end and they have ice cream inside it reminds me of that. So mm -hmm. I, make it I that. think that's what this is. But I want to make it that because it's not cold right now. Ruthie got me on the Snickers wave and I can't go back. There's nothing like a post workout Snickers. When you are just so like tired and hungry and all that, like Snickers is really the way to go.